Relief is on the way for flooding victims on the southeast side of Evansville. We will have a live report. Plus, people who live and work on parts of South Weinbach are under a boil advisory tonight because of a water main break. And Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels meets with President Bush to discuss hot button issues impacting the nation. This is Fox 7 WTVW News at 6. The most local news, the most local coverage. Tax breaks could be the newest weapon in the fight against flooding in Evansville. Good evening, I'm Jackie Monroe. And I'm Randy Moore. Homeowners in waterlogged neighborhoods could actually see their property taxes go up this year. Is there a fix for this latest frustration? Fox 7's Andy Schroeder joins us now with the story. Well, good evening, Randy. Higher property taxes would just be more bad news for folks who live here on the flood-prone southeast side. You may remember last September they saw torrential rains that did tens of thousands of dollars to their property down here. But now, thanks to a rather obscure tax form and some creativity on the part of the Vanderbilt County Assessor, relief may be on the way. It is a plan that offers no guarantees. Stick it in here. It will need the approval of state bureaucrats to work. Have you had flooding problems? Yes. But for residents here, it does offer a little hope. Oh, that would be nice. That so. would be very nice. It's been five months since these southeast side streets were covered in hip-deep water. Water that trashed homes and property, like Brian Reedford's place. I mean, I'll take anything I can get, because I probably lost $15,000 worth of stuff. What Brian might get a property tax break. Hi, I'm Jonathan Weaver. County Assessor Jonathan Weaver is walking these neighborhoods, handing out a form called the 137R, a request for the state to reassess the value of a home. Well, I'm hoping it helps. I want to base, the goal is to reduce their assessed value. So in, in, in terms of that, maybe paying lower property taxes. The city bought the house that used to stand here and tore it down. That's how severe the flood damage was. But there are other homes in this neighborhood that have been damaged just as bad, and some of them have assessed property values set to go up anywhere from fifteen to $30,000, even though the owners can't live in them. So you're going to get that a notice of assessment, and they're going to freak out. So this is why we need to do something. Each homeowner who fills out the form will be part of a formal request made to the state to reassess due to flood damage. If it is successful, it could save them about one to two hundred bucks a year. Not bad, considering most of these folks feel stuck in their soggy situations. But until this gets all cleared up, I don't know anybody in the right mind would come here and buy a house. Now those requests for reassessment will be sent off to the state sometime in early April. There is no timeline right now on when the state may get back with the homeowners. But if you want to make sure your property gets on that list of potential reassessments, you need to make sure you get in touch with the Vandenberg County Assessor's Office before March 30th. Reporting live, Andy Schroeder, Fox 7 News. A water main break has shut down part of Weinbach Avenue. Officials from American Water say they received a call around 1 today advising them of the break. They then shut down Weinbach between Washington and Monroe. We feel it's weather related as far as that right now. It's uh, the, the changeable weather that we've been having recently. The shutdown not only affects people who live in the area, but businesses too. As a precautionary measure, officials are advising residents to boil their water for five minutes before use. A grandmother and her little granddaughter are still in the hospital after a fire in their apartment in Evansville Friday night. Fire investigators say a cigarette may have caused it. The blaze broke out around 9 at the Harrelton Court Apartments off of Covert Avenue. Patty Garrison and her four-year-old granddaughter, Elijah Banks, suffered burns and were transported to separate hospitals. They both remain in serious condition. The final candidate in the search for a new Evansville School, uh, Evansville Vanderbilt County School Corporation superintendent will have his interview tomorrow. Dr. Jeff Swenson is the associate superintendent of the, the Metropolitan School District in Warren Township in Indianapolis. He missed his first interview due to bad weather. The other candidates, Dr. Yvonne Bullock, Dr. Philip Knight and interim superintendent Dr. Bob Yeager all were interviewed. School board president Dana Willett says the update will uh, will update the search at tonight's board meeting. Two other finalists took themselves out of contention after their interviews. Will the board open up the search to more candidates? We'll have more in the store tonight at 9. The Gibson County Courthouse was closed today while workers repaired the boiler that overheated over the weekend. Firefighters were called to the courthouse at about 10.30 yesterday morning when a pressure gauge on the boiler failed to open. Fortunately, it didn't spark a fire and nobody got hurt. 
Officials expect to open the building tomorrow. The motion to remove the Henderson County School Board from a wrongful death lawsuit is still awaiting a court date. The parents of a 16-year-old football player who died this summer filed that suit. The school board was named as one of 10 defendants in the lawsuit filed on behalf of Ryan Owens. Last week, in a response to this lawsuit, lawyers for the defendants say the school board has governmental immunity and cannot be held liable in the case. That motion for dismissal was supposed to be heard today, but has been rescheduled for a later time. The date has not been set. Governor Daniels got face to face with President Bush today. The president spoke at the National Governors Association meeting. Bush says he's pleased with the nation's economy and he won't raise taxes. Governor Daniels says the president touched on topics that apply to the entire country as well as individual states. Well, an understanding that um, much of the action is in the states these days, uh, that uh, progress on health care and education are, right, are most likely to take uh, place in the states, and that uh, I hope that the administration will be supportive of that, I expect they will be. The president hosted the governors for dinner Sunday night. He listed education, immigration, health care, and homeland security as the most important issues facing the country. Mailing a letter may soon cost you two cents more, but there may be a way for you to avoid that annoying stamp postal raise in the future. This morning, the Independent Postal Regulatory Commission recommended a two cent increase that would raise postage rates for letters to 41 cents. A ruling wouldn't come down until May, but part of their proposal includes the introduction of a forever stamp. That stamp, which would not show a denomination, would sell at the first class rate at the time of purchase, and it would hold valid for any future date, despite any postal hikes. All right, time out now for a first check of the weather and Chief Meteorologist Ron Rhodes. Guys, we have got a sky that is half cloudy up to my north. It is clear down to the south, and we are going to all see clearing as the night goes on. But of course, when it clears in February, you know the temperature is going to tumble, and it is. The temperatures are going to be moving down into the 30s within the next couple of hours. Right now, we're barely hanging on to 40 degrees, just in the low 40s. 43 is what we have downtown. That's exactly what we have, too, out there at the airport. Now, on radar, you can see some returns showing up. Northern Vandenberg County, Warwick County, of course, down to the south as well around Calhoun and Hartford, but nothing has reached the ground, at least nothing of late. Now, there was a, a return showing up in Grayson County that could have been producing a lot of rain, but it's really dry out here, and that's the reason why all this return action is aloft, and this rain is not making its way down to the ground. It is evaporating before it can. Here's how it looks hour by hour tonight. And again, the temperature right now, 43 degrees, and in the next hour, we're going to see that temperature drop and it's going to continue to fall steadily. Low 40s at 7 o'clock, down into the 30s by 8 o'clock. Overnight low temperature, 28 degrees. But not a whole lot of wind out here right now, so that's helping out. We are going to warm up, though. The next couple of days, it's really going to pick up. We've got a roller coaster ride, though, this week. We're going to warm up to storms, and then we're going to cool off to a little bit of snow, it looks like, over the weekend. And I'll be back with the complete forecast in a few minutes. Thanks, Ron. Still ahead, preschoolers gathered at the Children's Museum today for a musical lesson from some professionals. Plus, 40 trees along Main Street in Evansville are being replaced with new ones as the plan to revitalize downtown continues. That story next on Fox 7 News at 6. Good morning. Good morning. Thing is, aging doesn't happen one problem at a time. For me, first arthritis hit, then high blood pressure, and the leave I took for my arthritis pain, I learned it may interact with my prescriptions. It's a good thing I did my homework. The pure pain relief of Tylenol arthritis pain works all day, and when used as directed, has less drug interaction risk than a leave. Absolutely, that's right. Very good. Now. We've got tons of savings on new Dodge trucks at Expressway Dodge. New half-ton Ram trucks with up to six tons of savings. That's right, Expressway customers can save up to $12,000 on new Ram trucks. New 2007 Ram 1500s with air as low as $11,890. Plus, your choice of accessories for just 99 cents with your new truck purchase. Tons of savings on new Dodge trucks only at Expressway Dodge. To report breaking news, call our newsroom at 421-4030 or just dial pound 77 on your singular wireless phone.
Do you need a better vehicle? Anniversaries are always special, but the first anniversary calls for a celebration. At Romaine Cross Point, it's all about celebration pricing on the pre-owned vehicle you need, like Dodge Stratus or Chevy Malibu, starting at only $79.90. Get the vehicle you want at the price you want with the free lifetime powertrain warranty you need. Save during our first anniversary celebration. I'm at I-164 and the Lloyd Expressway, Romaine Cross Point. Here's a deal that'll have you jumping for joy. Two filet of fish sandwiches for just $3.33. Add a Coke and fries and you've got a crowd pleaser. <laughs> Watching Fox 7 WTVW News at 6 with Randy Moore, Jackie Monroe, and Chief Meteorologist Ron Rhodes. Fox 7 WTVW, the most local news, the most local coverage. The Evansville Philharmonic Orchestra put on an educational concert today for preschoolers. The lollipop concerts are many performances designed to introduce children to the instruments of the orchestra and basic musical concepts. In addition to the lollipop performances, the kids learn more about the music and the performing arts by exploring selected areas of the Children's Museum. It's a great opportunity for children to get up close and personal with the musicians of the Evansville Philharmonic and to hear in a very intimate setting the classical music provided by the Philharmonic. The lollipop concerts run through Friday at the Cook Family Children's Museum of Evansville. Preschool age children can enjoy these fun filled performances twice daily beginning at 9.30 and 10.30. Admission to the concerts is $1 per child and adult. Efforts to make the downtown area more attractive continues with the removal of more trees. Crews from the Department of Urban Forestry unearthed a group of Bradford pear trees along Main Street today. The department says the trees attract a lot of birds when they drop their fruit, and that can be a real mess. More than 40 trees will be removed and eventually replaced by 25 different species of trees. The cost of the project is expected to be around $7,000. This is the final year of the three-year tree replacement program. The 2008 Olympic Games are still one year away, but one tri-state boxer is inching closer to reaching every athlete's ultimate dream. Ray Stallings is one of the top amateur fighters in the country. He is a former state and Golden Gloves champion, but his ultimate victory was defeating thyroid cancer. Tonight at 9, Sean McCose will share his incredible comeback story as Ray continues his comeback and his journey to qualify for the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. I'm hanging out here with Pack 301. Guys, how are you doing? Good. They're ready. They, you know, we smell barbecue out here, but it, really, there's nothing on the grill right now. That could change. You guys bring any hot dogs with you? No. I guess we're not eating out here in the backyard tonight. Okay, I'll be back with the forecast, though, coming up right after this. <laughs> oh, you're sad. Or... Some things you don't mind missing out on. <laughs> I'd like a moment of your time to show you one of my amazing products. Dinner! One thing you don't want to miss out on is yield. Use Lumax and round up ready corn and you won't, unlike Monsanto's program. And with corn prices what they are, every bushel counts. Ask your dealer about Lumax. Now you can rev up your lifestyle in a Dodge Charger or Dodge Magnum. Get an available fuel-efficient 3.5-liter V6 or the legendary power of a heavy V8. Plus all-speed traction control and a five-star government frontal crash test rating. Now get $1,500 cash allowance on Dodge Charger RT. Charger, Magnum, two of America's hottest products. Open up a Magnum or unleash a Charger now at your Dodge dealer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Window World, home of the $189 installed window. We don't build trucks. We engineer them. We don't settle for existing technology. We invent new ways of taking it further. We don't look at innovation as a means to an end, but rather as a way to give you every advantage possible. Because at the end of the day, you're the one in the driver's seat. Honda Trucks.
Now get APR financing as low as 0.9% on select Honda trucks for well-qualified buyers. There's more to keeping a car roadworthy than a good mechanic. You also need car insurance. Without it, you run a risk of paying heavy fines or having your car impounded. So pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. You can get immediate coverage and low monthly payments. Which you can make over the phone or by logging onto our website. Keeping your car roadworthy is your job. Keeping you roadworthy is ours. The weather outside is brought to you by Bass Myers, fireplace, patio, and spas. The pros of a patio. We're back out here in the backyard. I've got Pack 301 Methodist Temple, east side of Evansville. Let's do your names. Here you go. Ring the bell with your name. Austin Payne. Austin Payne. Here we go. Anthony Quinzer. Anthony Quinzer. Kyle Newman. Go, Kyle. Alex King. Say it loud. Alex King. All right. Good job. Chad Upman. All right, Chad. Jackson Lennon. Go, Jackson. Keelan. All right, Keelan. Keelan's he's, he's so famous, just one name. Colin Mangold. All right, Colin Mangold. He got a double ring on that one. Did you hear that? All right, good job. We got the whole crew. Hey, guys, come on out here. Pack 301, again, Methodist Temple. You got, they range from Tiger Cubs to Weeblo. So we, got, we run the gamut all the way up to almost Boy Scouts. Okay. You guys, some of you are getting close to Boy Scouts. Okay, you guys don't remember, there's an old commercial that went, roll that beautiful bean footage. And you guys don't remember that, do you? Because you're too young. But I'll bet if you look in that camera right now, we've got director Connie Guest back there, and say, roll that snow footage. She'll roll do it. Roll that snow footage. Let's see what happens. There it is. All right, this is Newton, Iowa. There's nothing beautiful about this footage, though, I'll tell you that much, because look at all the snow and ice. A lot of people in Iowa are without power. That's the storm system that really missed us. We had big storms down to the south of us, Arkansas, Memphis, northern Mississippi. And then north of us and northwest of us, this is what they got, a lot of snow and ice. And nobody likes the ice. Look at that tree bent over from the weight of that ice, snapping power lines. A lot of people were without power. Now, though, uh, things are improving, but there are still some people without power uh, in parts, really a large swath of the Midwest. There are some people without power. This is Newton, Iowa right there, though. Okay, let's take a look at radar right now. And you can see some returns showing up on radar. And some of the scouts noticed that, too. We were inside where I've got my radar. And I thought, man, there's a little rain right there. But it's not reaching the ground. It's too dry. But, you know, the radar aims upward toward the clouds to see that. And a lot of times it can catch these returns up in the air but not making its way down to the ground. And why is it not making its way down to the ground? Because the dew point's too low. 31, the dew point. 43 is where the temperature is. Now, obviously, the closer the dew point and the temperature, the more saturated the air. So if this dew point was reading about 43, those returns would be making it to the ground. That air would be saturated from cloud to ground, but not the case and no precipitation showing up in the gauge. And these are the temperatures from across the board and 43 in Carmi, 43 Princeton, 44 Vincennes. Sounds pretty good for late February, but it is chilly to say the least, but there's not a whole lot of wind out here. You scouts are ready though, aren't you? Yeah, even if there was a big wind gust, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be faced at all, would you? Although there are three scouts I see over there, well, two of them, without a coat. What's up with that? The motto, be prepared. You're just, you're, your motto's be tough, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. They got a new motto. They're making new models. Uh, this is what we've got. Satellite picture over the past 12 hours. We've seen some sunshine. We've seen a lot of clouds as well. Right now, we're starting to see the clearing. There's that swath of clouds that's just north of us here in the tri-state. Now, can you guys look up? Can you tell me what phase of the moon it is? You guys check that out and see if you can see the moon out here and tell me what phase that is. And you can see the clearing starting out west and we're going to see high pressure break up the clouds over the next 12 hours and that is going to make for a sunny day tomorrow thanks to the high pressure and then we're really gonna have a nice day uh, Wednesday and then Thursday here come the thunderstorms unfortunately here's the swath showing us rain wouldn't be surprised if it was a little bit of rain in spots especially that dark green streak and that little yellow streak showing up in Grayson County all that's working its way to the east most of us though didn't see a drop of rain and high pressure is the name of the game over the next 24 hours, and it's down to the south of us, the center of that high, low well to the north, and we've got the winds picking up a little bit from the northwest, but nothing too terrific. As you can see, widely spaced isobars. But look at these isobars tightening to the west. That's the next storm system that's going to be coming in. Now, Wednesday, we're going to see the wind pick up from the south. That temperature's going to pick up, too. But it's going to be Thursday before we actually see much of any rain, although we might see a stray shower pop up with that warm front Wednesday evening. I think it's going to be Thursday, and Thursday at around dinner time, they will have the best chance for severe weather. 
Clearing and cold, 28 degrees for a low. That's good camp out weather, isn't it? I heard one, yeah. <laughs> I heard a few more no's. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow. Chilly, 49 degrees. Have you guys camped out yet? No. Not yet. They're waiting for their first camp out. I'm sure it'll come soon. And there we go. 57 on Wednesday. That's a good looking day. Breezy, but warmer. And that's always nice. 66 thunderstorms on Thursday. Some of these could be severe, especially Thursday evening when that front hits. And then temperatures cool off. We might see a few flakes of snow on Saturday, but it won't get you out of school. Another Saturday snow. How about that? <laughs> Thanks, Ron. All right, guys. The latest college basketball polls are out. Doug Kuffner will tell you where your favorite team ranks. That's coming up. Plus, modern day's tag team, the Gables, are still celebrating the Wildcats' latest wrestling team title, WrestleMania, next in sport. Anniversaries are always special, but the first anniversary calls for a celebration. At Romaine Cost Point Auto Park, we're celebrating a fantastic first year. Every new and pre-owned vehicle is marked down to our guaranteed lowest price with our free lifetime powertrain warranty. Drive a brand new 2007 Buick Lucerne for under $23,000. Shopping Romaine Cross Point is a piece of cake during our first anniversary sale. Up at I-164 and the Lloyd Expressway, Romaine Cross Point Auto Consider Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt Burger a trophy burger. A juicy, fresh trophy burger. It's for you, for your triumph over the frozen phonies. Three strips of bacon, cheddar mushroom sauce, fresh, not frozen beef. Made when you order it. So bravo, Bacon Mushroom Melt Champ. Take a bow and take a bite. Because you strive higher to do what tastes right. Every Tuesday, Dr. House solves the latest medical ailment. Then Sarah Brownlee brings you the latest medical news on house calls. Brought to you by St. Mary's Advanced Care Hospital. Old National Bank is honored to celebrate Black History Month. While you celebrate Black History this month, remember that Black History is happening now. Nicole Lyons is the driven woman behind the world's most powerful engine. In 2005, Nicole became the first black woman in pro stock racing. And in 2006, she built a record-breaking 1,100 horsepower engine. Keep driving, Nicole. You're making black history. Old National Bank salutes those making black history past, present, and future. Expressway Ford Mercury will do whatever it takes to put you in a new Ford or Mercury. We'll beat every other Ford dealer by at least $500. That's right, at least $500, and we guarantee it. New 2007 four-door F-150s, as low as $12,490. Just $12,490 for the number one selling truck in America. For the best prices and selection, head in our direction. Expressway Ford Mercury in Mount Vernon, Indiana. Doing whatever it takes. Now, here's Doug Kuffner with sports. Hello again, everyone. When it comes to Indiana High School wrestling, modern day, plain and simple, the cat's meow. MD clawed its way to the 12th team title in school history by beating Avon, Indy Cathedral, then Mishawaka at last Saturday's team championships at Center Grove High School, making Mike Gable the winningest wrestling coach in Hoosier High School history. What a ride it's been for Mike and his son, Zach, who wrestles in the 215-pound weight class. The Cats senior recording three wins at the team tournament. Gable 45-2 and two as a senior. Zach, just one of those seniors that will truly be missed by dear old dad next season. He's a special kid, and he's had a lot of fun. And uh, he's just part of this great senior group. From a father's perspective, you know, I'm going to miss the heck out of him. Uh, I've grown to admire him and certainly happy and pleased that he was able to contribute. Oh, he's the best coach in the world, and uh, nothing that nothing can compliment him more than us trying to do this, you know, for the team and for the coaches. And uh, you know, it's just it's great to win one for him, especially my senior year. So how ironic is it that a Cat senior clinched the title in the next to last match of the team states? Modern day's Nick Daywig wrestling with a broken hand. Believe it or not, continued his mat domination with a major decision, capping off a 31-18 victory over those second-ranked cavemen. Daywig is one of nine seniors who led Modern Day to the promised land this year, but it takes a team effort to win a team title. And Modern Day's underclassmen really stepping up big Saturday, including 130-pound junior Cody Mole. Now, Mole won all three of his matches, two pinfall decisions. I'm just seeing myself more of a dark horse, like opponents don't really expect me as much, and I don't know, I just do my job. Kind of a spike plug for the Wildcats. Yeah, that's what uh, people like to say. <laughs> we got a good senior group, but 
you know, a senior group's nothing if they don't have followers. And, uh, you know, we got a great group of followers this year, which will become next year's leaders. We got a few guys coming back, so the uniforms, uh, I think they'll still fit next year. The cupboard ne never bare, I should say, at Modern Day. Congratulations again to the defending state champs. Rick and I enjoyed covering you this season. Nobody gave Notre Dame a chance to win or even be competitive in the Big East when the college basketball season began. My, how things have changed. Notre Dame has turned into one of Big East beasts. The Irish have won four straight and are ranked 17th in this week's coaches poll. Just a game behind third place Louisville. They improved to 21-8 with a 76-69 win at UConn. Cardinal character really starting to show. Freshman Derek character averaging 15 points a game over his last sixth. Louisville 19th this week. Evansville native Chris Lowry and Southern Illinois won their fifth Valley regular season title in six years last Wednesday. Then SIU survived UE Senior Night Scare Saturday in Carbondale for its 11th straight win. Those Egyptian dogs number 11. They'll open MVC tournament play Friday against either UE or Drake. And guys, the Aces and Bulldogs play on Thursday night in the opener. UE and Drake splitting the regular season. All right, Doug. Very good. Thanks a lot. Forecast in just a moment. to your family. It matters to ours. Family First on Fox 7 WTVW. Guys love going out for buffalo wings. That is, when they're with the guys. What? The buffalo chicken sandwich. New at Hardee's. Consider this about heart care. The Heart Hospital at Deaconess and Deaconess Gateway Hospital is a recognized leader in emergency heart care, as well as the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of heart disease. In fact, the highly skilled Deaconess Heart Team performs more life-saving heart procedures than any other hospital in the region. And when it's about your heart, experience matters. It's your health. Choose wisely. Choose Deaconess. Porter with Integra Bank, and I want you to help me keep Evansville beautiful. Expressway is proud to introduce the newest addition to our automotive family. Expressway Jeep Chrysler Dodge in Mount Vernon, Indiana. Now we've got brand new Jeeps, Jeeps, and more new Jeeps, like brand new 07 Jeep Liberty or 06 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredos. Your choice, $69.90. 06 Chrysler Sebring's as low as $99.90. And always guaranteed lowest prices at Expressway's newest edition. Expressway Jeep Chrysler Dodge in downtown Mount Vernon, Indiana. Now, here's meteorologist Ron Rhodes with your AccuWeather forecast. Brought to you by Canny Kent Toyota. Clear sky tonight, and the temperature's going to be dropping down to 28 degrees. Tomorrow, though, we're going to start to warm up a little bit, warm up more as the week goes on. Unfortunately, we're warming up the storm, 66, and some thunderstorms on Thursday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's going to get colder. In fact, so cold, we could see a few flakes of snow showing up on Saturday, guys. Not a whole lot. Funeral home in Rockport, Indiana, didn't honor a prepaid funeral arrangement. Now the Evansville family has filed a complaint and other victims are coming forward. Plus tonight at 6.30, the Fox daytime hit, hit show Tyra Banks welcomed a local on today's episode. Find out how Tyra inspired her to write in and be on the show. That's going to do it, though, for Fox 7 News at 6. Thanks for watching. Fox 7 News at 6.30 is next. Good luck, guys. Expressway is the best way to buy your next vehicle. We'll beat any competitor's price by at least $500. We, we guarantee, guarantee it. Like a new 2007 Chevy Silverado for as low as $10,990. 2007 Ford Taurus leather and sunroof as low as $12,990. Or new Dodge Caliber as low as $12,990. The largest selection and guaranteed lowest prices at Expressway Ford Mercury. Expressway Chevrolet Buick Pontiac GMC in Mount Vernon. And Expressway Dodge in Evansville. Thank you.
Now there's an Italian design I could get into. We always have had exceptional taste. Wow, that looks so amazing. Mm. And it's hot, too. Let's, Let's get, get it. it. Introducing the new Roma Chicken Ciabatta Sandwich from Subway Restaurants. Tender grilled chicken strips tossed with sun-dried tomato seasoning and melted provolone cheese. Fresh toasted and hot from the oven on our new crispy ciabatta bread. Italian style for your premium taste. Subway. Eat fresh. From WTDW, Fox 7 and McDonald's, here is tonight's winning viewer's club card number. 18966. If your card number matches the number on the screen, call 424-7777. The next business day to claim your prize. If you don't have a WTBW Viewers Club card, sign up today at WTBW.com or any participating Tri-State McDonald's. It's free from WTBW, Fox 7 and McDonald's. Residents and businesses on parts of South Wybock Avenue in Evansville are under a boil advisory after a water main break there. And relief is on the way for flooding victims on the southeast side of Evansville. We'll have a live report. Plus, an Evansville family says a pre-planned burial arrangement at a Rockport funeral home has not been fulfilled. This is Fox 7 WTDW News at 6.30. The most local news, the most local coverage. Good evening, I'm Jackie Monroe. And I'm Randy Moore. Before we do anything else, let's head right outside to Chief Meteorologist Ron Rhodes with our first look at the weather. Yeah, guys, hang out here in the backyard, and temperature's cool, but at least we don't have a whole lot of wind out here. That's going to be changing on Wednesday, but tomorrow looks like a good day. It's going to be a little nippy, though. In fact, tonight, though, the chill is on, but not the wind. Temperatures will be falling into the upper 30s over the next few hours. Right now, we're at 43 degrees. West-northwest wind, very tolerable at 6 miles an hour and less. Sky, where it hasn't cleared already, will start to clear overnight, and it is going to drop below freezing, so dump all that rain out of your rain gauge. We've got more rain headed later in the week. In fact, some thunderstorms rumbling on Thursday that I'll tell you about more coming up in a few minutes, guys. Thanks, Ron. A major water main break has shut down Weibach Avenue from Washington to Monroe. Right now, the water is turned off in that area, and a boil advisory will be in effect. Fox 7's Latanya Stevens has our story bubbled up through the cracks in the asphalt and poured down Weinbach Avenue. Crews scrambled to find the source of the leak and the people who live here could only stand by and watch. Don't have no water, can't get a shower, can't go to the bathroom, can't cook, can't drink water. I mean, there's nothing unless you go buy it. Officials believe it was the effects of the weather. Alternating cold and warm weather caused the 12 inch main to crack. Right now we're getting the utility locate so we can actually drill holes to locate where the leak is and uh, they're in the process of finishing the shutdown on the water main and they're preparing to uh, dig a hole. This portion of Weinbach Avenue is now officially shut down and residents are wondering just how long it will take to reopen. It's going to be a big mess. Can't get in, can't get out and it's kind of everybody's stuck here right now and it makes it really hard to go to stores or anything else. American Water, which manages the system for the city, says the potential for contamination of drinking water is unlikely. However, they are advising that customers in the area bring all cooking and drinking water to a complete bowl for five minutes before using it. And as for the road closing, they say it could last until tomorrow morning or possibly even longer. Latanya Stevens, Fox 7 News. Not far from the site of that water main break, residents are all too familiar with water in the streets, but help could be on the way for neighbors hit by chronic flooding, and it could come from an unlikely source. Box of and Danny Schroeder joins us now with the story. Well, good evening, Jackie. Folks who live in this neighborhood are no stranger to that flooding. In fact, the house that used to stand where I'm standing right now is actually torn down because the problem is so persistent. Well, there may be more bad news on the way for folks who live in this area. Property tax assessments are going up. For some folks around here, as much as fifteen dollars to $30,000 in the uh, most heavily damaged areas of some of the flooding down here. Now, there is some potentially good news, though. Vandenberg County Assessor Jonathan Weaver is asking the state to give these people a break. He spent the day passing out a form it's known in the business as a 137R. It's basically a request for disaster victims to file with the state and ask the state to give their damaged property a reassessment. Now, uh, that would lower the assessed value in some cases and also lower the amount of property taxes they'd have to pay. Now, Assessor Weaver says there are no guarantees that this ploy will work, but residents in the area are happy 
to get any breaks they can. I'm hoping it helps. I want to base, the goal is to reduce their assessed value. So in, in, in terms of that, maybe paying lower property taxes. I mean, I'll take anything I can get because I probably lost $15,000 worth of stuff. We had our whole backyard full of, full of stuff. We threw everything away just because it's sewer water. Now, if you live in these flood-prone areas and you would like to file that form with the state to try and get your house reassessed and possibly get your property taxes reduced, you need to contact the Vandenberg County Assessor's Office no later than March 30th. Reporting live, Andy Schroeder, Fox 7 News. The death of a loved one in an emotionally trying time can be less stressful if funeral arrangements are made ahead of time. But what if those arrangements aren't honored by the funeral home? That is exactly what one Evansville woman says happened to her. Fox News' Nicole Burley joins us now with a story. Well, Randy, Shirley Burkhart says Bolting House Funeral Home in Rockport didn't honor her cousin's prepaid funeral contract. And Burkhart says if she hadn't found the original documents, she never would have known there was a problem. And Don C. Burkhart versus Bolting House Funeral Home Incorporated. Shirley Burkhart's reviewing the complaint she and her husband, Don, filed with the Attorney General against Bolting House Funeral Home. She says her trouble started after her cousin Billy died last October. She says Bolting House didn't honor the pre-planned arrangements Billy had requested and set up insurance policies to pay for. He figured up charges. He went through all of his paperwork and he said, um, well, um, it's $1,800 short. Burkhart says she and her husband couldn't pay the almost $2,000 in additional money the funeral home was requesting. So she says the owner, Evan Thayer, came up with a solution. Uh, so he lowered the products, the casket, and the vault. The Burkharts still ended up paying $150. They weren't happy, but they thought the issue was resolved. But that quickly changed. A few days later, we found the contract that Billy had signed at his home. So Don started looking at it and he said, you know what, I don't think we should have been charged any money. Shirley says after her issue with Bolting House, she started to wonder if other families had problems too. So she decided to do some investigation herself. I started looking at the funerals that Bolting House had been involved in. And I just started calling people saying, did you have a pre-planned funeral with Bolting House? And if you did, did you have a problem? Shirley says she found other people who had been asked to pay more money in spite of the pre-planned arrangements. And the one lady, she said, you know, I, I am just so upset and I'm so tired of all of this. I just paid him the 294 just to have it over with. Shirley says she filed a complaint with the state and she wants justice not only for herself, but more importantly, for her cousin Billy. Billy didn't get anything that he signed in that contract for. Now, I was able to get in touch with Evan Thayer, the owner of Bolting House. He says some items in a contract are never guaranteed, and that's made clear to all parties. Thayer also says one of the insurance policies Billy set up never sent a payment because the paperwork was filled out incorrectly. Thayer says the Burkharts have never tried to contact him directly, and they actually sent him a thank you card after the funeral. Now, as far as the complaint the Burkharts filed, I called the Attorney General's office who would not confirm the Burkharts' complaint, but I did see a copy of the paperwork at their house. A grandmother and her little granddaughter are still in the hospital after a fire in their apartment in Evansville last night. I'm sorry, that was Friday night. Fire investigators say a cigarette may have caused it. The blaze broke out around 9 at the Harrelton Court Apartments off Covert Avenue. Patty Garrison and her four-year-old granddaughter, Elijah Banks, suffered burns and were transported to separate hospitals. They both remain in serious condition. Still ahead, the Tyra Banks show inspired an Owensboro woman to respond to a magazine article about being comfortable with your body image. My thighs rub together when I walk. So what? <laughs> well, that email landed her in L.A. and on the show. We'll talk with her live about that coming up next. What's your system for finding a date? Lately, it's been those online services. They're all the rage. But everybody I find is 300 miles away. It's very hard to find anybody local. Ladies, there is a dating system where you can meet local men absolutely free 24-7. All you need is your phone, and it's a free local call. You choose the men you like, and you never have to give out your phone number. You can make dating fun and exciting again. Call the system, the smarter way to date. Call now.
Watching Fox 7, WTVW News at 6.30 with Randy Moore, Jackie Monroe, and Chief Meteorologist Ron Rhodes. Fox 7, WTVW, the most local news, the most local coverage. Today, an Owensboro woman was on the Fox daytime television talk show, The Tyra Banks Show. That show focuses on empowering young women and encouraging them to achieve their dreams and reach their goals. Today's Tyra discussed the overwhelming response that Tyra's People Magazine cover story received. Tabitha Thomas from Owensboro was also inspired by that article, and she joins us to talk about that show. We see them putting numbers on swimsuits there. What did those numbers stand for, first that, of all? That was our weight. Your body How much weight. We weigh. Right. Which correlates directly to the People Magazine article. That article was about Tyra Banks and her own uh, sort of concern about body weight, wasn't it? Right. Tell right. us what it was about that article that really inspired you. It was just that she was so proud of her weight and that she had gained weight and that was okay with her. And uh, she just wanted people to know you don't have to be a size zero. You know, we don't want you to be obese, we don't want you to be unhealthy, but being a little bit curvier is okay uh -huh. and that was great to me because nobody ever says that you were talking on the show about being a nurse and how you and some of the other nurses that work with you all would have liked to have lost weight and that some of them tried a diet pill that you really shouldn't take if you have a heart defect right which you do so you I had do. to make a big decision i did i was really thinking about it really because a lot of girls were taking it and even some of the guys and they were losing weight mm -hmm. they were looking good and i was like i want to do that but i was too scared what's, i knew better what's so appealing about losing weight uh i just think in, in magazines and celebrities and stuff you see them they're skinny and they they look good and that's what the media wants you to think sure and in this episode all of the women in the audience were wearing the same red swimsuit with right. their weight right clear across the front, which I think is so amazing because it's not just a matter of I'm proud of it. It's, it's more like, look at me. I'm going to wear my weight on the front of my swimsuit, exactly. which takes guts to do. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. How was the whole experience wearing that? Was it liberating for you? It was. It, it made me feel so much better to know that I was with so many other people who felt the exact same way. And talk about that too. What were some of the stories that you heard from other folks on the show? Well, one of the other girls um, had thought about committing suicide because she was so upset over her weight and how she was planning to do it so her husband could yeah. get home and take care of her kids and they wouldn't see her. And then one girl had lost 210 pounds on her own with, you know, LA weight loss and that kind of stuff. But she still felt fat. She still felt fat. It's that, crazy. That blows my mind. Yeah. Um, I, I saw that interview, too, and that woman looked fabulous. All of you look fabulous, but um, whether or not you look fabulous isn't the point. The point is feeling confident and feeling good about right. yourself. Right. We right. shouldn't focus, really, on body image like we do. Mm -hmm. It should be a mental state. Sure. It shouldn't be so much how you look, but how you feel about how you look. And finally, what, what are you going to do now that you've kind of come away with this message? Is there any way you can project this message to folks you know here in the Tri-State? I want to. This might do some of it, and the people who watch the show might do some of it. So I don't really have any plans for how I can do it, but I just want people to know that you don't have to mm -hmm. be a size zero to feel beautiful. It is a great message. Thanks yeah. for coming and sharing it with Thank us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ron? The scouts of Pack 301 had to go home and get something to eat. I'm sticking around to give you the forecast, though, and I'll have it for you in the backyard right after this. This week at Daytona, Mark Martin and the 01 Army team won the $10,000 Checkers Rallies Double drive through Challenge for spending the least amount of time in pit lane. The 01 team is now eligible for the season-ending $100,000 grand prize. Congrats to the winning team from our rally's right side crew. <clears throat> Yeah, well, congrats from our left side crew. We bring you our new Screamer sandwiches. Spicy and sweet, chicken or fish. Your choice, two for three bucks. <coughs> Old National Bank is honored to celebrate Black History Month. While you celebrate Black History this month, remember that Black History is happening now. Nicole Lyons is the driven woman behind the world's most powerful engine. In 2005, Nicole became the first black woman in pro stock racing. And in 2006, she built a record-breaking 1,100 horsepower engine. Keep driving, Nicole. You're making black history. Old National Bank salutes those making black history past, present, and future. It's King's Free February. It's the final days. And now through Monday, get three years no down payment and no finance charges. That's three years free of interest through Monday. King's Great Buys Plus. All the comforts of home. 
The Weather Outside is brought to you by Bass Myers. Fireplace, patio, and spas. The pros of a patio. You know, a lot of times we're out here in the backyard. If the wind's blowing from the northwest, it's cold, yes. But it also brings in the smell from Lewis Bakeries. You know, the bakery smell, it's fresh bread. It's like, that's the best thing about a northwest wind, especially in the wintertime. Now, the wind is from the southwest. It's going to be shifting to the northwest, though, later on. But, you know, it's from the south. We're smelling barbecue. You know, and I thought that they, I thought somebody had cranked up the big green egg like Larry Rasco or John Bassmeyer, opened up the big green egg with the scouts. Nothing. You know, nothing going on. We're smelling the barbecue. It's not as strong as it was, though. It, it's, it's starting to lose a little bit of its zipper. Maybe I'm just, my nose is getting fatigued. I don't know. But not so much barbecue, but it smells delicious wherever it's from. Look southwest toward the river, and maybe that's where it is. This is what we've got right now on radar. Still a few returns. Actually, those have, we've lost those returns. I just checked it, and it had a few, but now they're gone. The update is clear. And even the returns that we had on there, they weren't reaching the ground because the air is just too dry right now. We've got plenty of rain ahead of us, though, on Thursday. We had plenty of rain over the weekend, too. I had an inch and a half out here in the backyard of rainfall, and I'm sure there were even more plentiful amounts out there. Well, there's going to be plentiful amounts of good ribs here in the backyard coming up in the middle of April. It's a tri-state cook-off, and I want... And I'm getting plenty of good nominations right now, but I want the best cook from Illinois, the best cook from Indiana, the best cook from Kentucky, all three of you to come here. It's a state pride issue. Who's got the best tri-state barbecue? And I'm getting, a, I'm getting a lot of entries, and all you have to do, you don't have to worry about the website because they're going to do a big overhaul in the next couple of weeks. I don't want that to be a problem. So ron at wtvw.com. So you just simple email. Tell me who you want to nominate as the cook. Make sure they want to come here and cook first. And then uh, you nominate that person with an email. Tell me which state they're from, because I've got a different folder for each state. And we'll bring the three of them here, and we'll see which state got the best ribs. We'll get a, we're going to get an all-star panel of judges, too. Some of the best. Uh, Sam Yates is already in. He told me that. We'll try to get John Bassmeyer here, maybe Larry Rasko or somebody like that. Somebody really knows their barbecue pretty well. So we'll have the group. We've got to get at least four judges, though, because if we get three and one picks each state, then you got to tie. We don't want to tie. We don't need that at all. Uh, we'll find out, though, and again, that'll be in the middle of April that we get it together. Keep nominating until then. I'll get a date once I find out who the nominations are going to be, and then we'll figure out what works best for everybody. 49, 29, high and low, and the average, that's the average high. Now, the record high, though, 1996, 72 degrees, record low, four above in 1934. There's that little wave, little trough of low pressure that cut across the tri-state over the course of the day today, and not a lot of rain on the ground, but you can see plenty of rain showing up aloft. A lot of snow up around the Great Lakes region, high pressure those building in, and that's what we've got for the next couple of days. Problem is on Thursday, we've got a, another strong area of low pressure. And I showed you that last newscast at the 6 o'clock newscast, uh, all the snow and ice that was had in Iowa and across a good chunk of the Midwest, and they got blizzard conditions from that low last week. Now we've got this low that's going to be trucking in on Thursday. Really, Wednesday, it's going to hit the midsection of the country. It's going to hit us on Thursday. And... We're going to be on the northern fringe of that severe weather threat. You can see the jet stream is going to be cutting right up here. In fact, a really strong jet streak just to our south uh, is going to be at 150 knots. I mean, that's an impressive little jet streak that's going to be pushing our way. And so that's the reason why I think we've got a better chance for severe weather this week than we did last week. And it looks like it's going to be on Thursday evening right now because it's going to be along that cold front that we have the best chance. And that is going to be right around dinner time on Thursday, right around 6, 7 o'clock at night. I know some people eat dinner at lunchtime. Well, in the middle of the day. 66, look at that, though. At least it gets warm ahead of the storms, but that's one more sign that we're going to see some storms. Temperature really drops off. Could see some snow on Saturday. Look at that plunge, almost 30 degrees from Thursday to Saturday. Rainfall-wise, we can get our chance, but really only about a half an inch of rain with this storm system. And look at this, a little bit of snow showing up for Saturday, two-tenths of an inch. It's not showing it there. I clicked it a little bit too fast. Sorry about that. Trust me, two-tenths of an inch, it's not going to be a big snow at all, but another Saturday snow. Clearing cold, 28 degrees for an overnight low temperature. Plenty of sunshine, 49 degrees for a high tomorrow. Good-looking day and not that windy, so that's not a bad deal, even though it's only 49 degrees. 57 on Wednesday. Plenty of wind on Wednesday from the south to push that temperature up a little bit. Thursday, here come those thunderstorms. It looks like the best chance is going to be in the evening for those storms. And then here comes that snow on Saturday as temperatures really cool off on the backside of that storm system, guys. All right. Thanks, Ron. Okay. Colts running back Dominic Rhodes appeared in an Indianapolis courtroom today. Doug Kupner has that story coming up. And we'll look back at Met Kenseth's first Nextel Cup win in 2007 yesterday at California. NASCAR Monday, next in sports. Guys love going out for buffalo wings. 
That is, when they're with the guys. What? The buffalo chicken sandwich. New at Hardee's. Hi, honey. Hi. Thought you went shopping. Well. In floor storage bins, one of the many benefits of Chrysler Town & Country's exclusive stow-and-go seating and storage system. Now get Town & Country, J.D. Power & Associates' highest-ranked van in initial quality with $4,000 cash allowance. Discover America's hottest products at your Chrysler dealer. Want to win a free trip to Daytona in 2008? Just watch every NASCAR race on Fox 7 WTVW. Email what lap the race is on when you see this on-screen graphic for your chance to win. Brought to you by Kenny Kent Toyota. This portion of the news is brought to you by Champion Windows. It's about time you saved money on your TV programming. With Dish Network, you'll get quality programming like America's Top 100 with your locals for just $24.99 a month for 10 months. Plus, choose from Showtime or Stars, free for three months, and even get a free DVR upgrade. Call right now and get a free home theater system with activation, courtesy of the Dish Activations line. But you need to call right now. 1-888-882-DISH. 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 Cuando ingresé en la Guardia Nacional nunca pensé que salvaría vidas. No hay solo dinero para la universidad. Ha fortalecido mi carácter. Tengo un sentido de logro. La Guardia me abrió las puertas. Ahora me preparo para una carrera y soy líder de mi equipo. Me pongo el uniforme y tengo una perspectiva totalmente distinta. Patria, comunidad, familia. Es lo más importante para mí. Si lo es también para ti, visita 1-800-GoGuard.com. Now, here's Doug Kuffner with sports. Hi again, everyone. NASCAR Monday on your Nextel Cup Series station, Fox 7. Race 2 of the 2007 season in the books. Unleaded fuel in the driver's gas tanks. Pole sitter Jeff Gordon, one of many big names who just couldn't get the lead out yesterday at Fontana. Dale Earnhardt Jr., another. Little E failed to finish for the second straight week. DEI's engines combusting, literally. Uh, could have been the new fuel, and Earnhardt bowing out of his second straight race early, this time on lap 121. And for the second straight week, Tony Stewart, not pictured, failed to uh, enter and exit pit row at illegal speed. Tony the Tiger still able to speed past 35 other drivers for his first top 10 of 2007. A first for the driver of the number 17 Ford, Matt Kenseth, who stayed out of trouble. It's a double trouble at California, his second straight Auto Club 500 win, 15th career victory, back-to-back -back weekend sweeps to open the new Nextel Cup season. He had to fight to get this second place finish. We, uh, we lost it uh, early on. We just way too tight, and we, uh, we finally got it freed up. Then we freed it up a little too much, and that last set of tires, you know, the guys did a great job. And I got a great restart, and something happened to Harvick, and uh, come home second. Now, after the second race of 2007, Mark Martin, your new points leader, followed by Jeff Burton, and number 24, Jeff Gordon. Kevin Harvick falls three spots to fourth. Harvick finished 17th at Fontana. Dave Reagan fifth, Clint Boyer sixth, Joe Nemechek seventh, followed by J.J. Yaley and Kyle Busch. Dave Strummy, David Gilliland, and today, or yesterday's winner, Ken, uh, Kenseth, rounding out our standings. The next Hell boys off this week, and they'll head for Las Vegas in two weeks. Indianapolis Colts running back Dominic Rhodes heading to his first court appearance today. Rhodes arrested for DUI just six days ago. The Colts' leading rusher in the Super Bowl will keep his driver's license, at least for now. Typically, drunk driving charges mean an automatic suspension, but there are inconsistencies with police reports on the morning of Rhodes' arrest. If convicted, Rhodes could face up to one year in prison. Usually a first-time offense, though, results in probation, a fine, and treatment. That's the good news. Now, the bad news is Colts' contract expiring this week. And it's bad timing, especially considering the NFL's free agent signing period four days from now. Mm. Mm. All right. Thanks, Doug. Be right back. Old National Bank is honored to celebrate Black History Month. While you celebrate Black History this month, remember that Black History is happening now. Nicole Lyons is the driven woman behind the world's most powerful engine. In 2005, Nicole became the first black woman in pro stock racing. And in 2006, she built a record-breaking 1,100 horsepower engine. Keep driving, Nicole. You're making black history. Old National Bank salutes those making black history past, present, and future. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. 
President's Day only comes once a year. And to celebrate, Chevy has a commanding offer. 0% financing on almost every 07. Like 0% for 60 months on the Silverado Classic and other models. Offer extended, but only till February 28th. See your local Chevy dealer. A Tri-State Boxer story is one of courage and determination. Ray Stallings is inching closer to reaching every athlete's dream, the Olympics. But his ultimate victory was defeating thyroid cancer. Sean McCose will share Ray's incredible comeback story tonight on Fox 7 News at 9. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night, and we'll see you at 9. I want one of those new front-loading washers that hold...